بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شفيع الأنبياء والمرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so I've got a message uh, can you ask the sisters to keep quiet please I think yesterday mashallah they were okay but today another message has come there's too much noise upstairs so if you can please request the sisters uh, to please please keep the noise down inshallah um, so yesterday in uh, Taraweeh Shaykh Abdul Rahman he recited Surah Al-Mu'minun um, and in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He talks at the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, He talks about um, those who were successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflah al mu'minun That indeed successful are the believers. That the believers are successful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on and talks about certain traits, certain actions that these successful people used to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those that when it came to their prayer, they would pray with khushur. And we've already talked about prayer in previous reminders, so I'm not going to, to focus on that today. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ Those who when it comes to laghu, and what is laghu? The scholars of tafsir, some of them said it's ma'asi, some of them said it's batil, it's sin, it's falsehood, idle talk, vain talk. They turned away from idle talk and vain talk. They turned away from those things in which there was no benefit. So here Allah is describing what? And I, I encourage you to go away and to read these uh, traits of the successful ones. And there are a number of other ones are mentioned. But I want to focus on this one today. Yes, that they turn away from what? From idle talk, they turn away from that in which there is no benefit. And what's interesting actually before we get on to that, is when you look in Surah Al-Mudathir, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks uh, about the conversation that will take place between the people in Jannah and the people in the Hellfire. And the people in Hellfire will be asked a question, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ That what caused you to enter the Hellfire? And what's the response going to be? The first thing they will say is that we were not those who used to pray. We were not those who used to pray. Allah talks about the successful ones, those who used to pray with khushu'a. He talks about those in, in, in Jahannam, in the hellfire. What's their response? We never used to pray. That she teaches us what the importance of prayer. Other things are also mentioned. The people in the hellfire will say, we never used to feed the hungry or the poor. We never used to take care of them. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talks about the successful ones, he says, those who used to give their zakah i.e. they used to take care of the poor and needy so there's a contrast here but the one that I want to focus on is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they turn away from this laghu and as I said there are different interpretations of laghu one of them is idle talk they turn away from idle talk vain talk and when we think about it today subhanallah how many of us we waste hours upon hours upon hours in idle talk yes in talk which there's no benefit whatsoever and when you reflect and you think, what are the majority of our conversations, what do they consist of? Often, really, when you really reflect, often our conversations consist of what? Um, sins of the tongue. Whether it's backbiting, whether it's slandering, whether it's gossiping. And we get involved in things that don't concern us. And Allah is telling us that actually those who are successful, i.e. they, and, and the, the ayat, when they talk about success, they say they inherit Jannatul Firdaus. Yes, they, these are the people who get what? Al-Firdaus, the highest level of Jannah. Why? Because they turned away from all of that. And you know the Arabs, they have a saying. They say, اللسان مرآت لما في الصدور That the, the tongue is a mirror of what's in the heart. So you know if you're constantly coming out with rubbish, and you're constantly talking nonsense, and you're using foul language, what is that saying about the state of one's heart? What is that saying about the state of our hearts? That's something that we must reflect on. And when you think about the, the, the tongue itself, and I'll, I want to spend a bit of time just focusing on the tongue. The tongue, subhanAllah, has, has the power to destroy families. It has the power to ruin relationships. Yes, we've seen this. How many times have you seen relationships have broken down? Why? Because of, of the tongue. Because of what one person said to the other. It happens all the time. It affects the harmony within the family. It affects relationships between siblings. 
Yes, when somebody can't control the tongue. And one thing we should realize, my dear brothers and sisters, is that you know these sins of, of lying, of backbiting, of slandering, of exposing others, of gossiping, these um, if we're not careful, we'll completely ruin all of the good deeds that we do. And at the end, I will mention a hadith which illustrates this point. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Qaf, He mentions that مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيمٌ عَتِيدٌ That every single word that we utter, yes, is being recorded. Angels are writing down everything you and I say. Sometimes you might think you're by yourself. Sometimes you might think you're with your close friend. And you need to have a conversation in private. It's just you and that person. Yes, and then you discuss what the affairs of another individual. And you think nobody else is there. Realize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us. That that's being written down. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar raqib He's the one who observes everything. And even when you think you're by yourself and you're having that private conversation, if that private conversation is no fa'id in it, then realize that's not a conversation you should be having. And realize that that conversation is being written down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet also told us the power of the tongue when he said that a person, inna al abda la yatakallam bil kalima, a person might say one kalima and he doesn't give it any concern, he doesn't think anything of it. But because of that one kalima, because of that one statement that he made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate his ranks in Jannah. Alternatively, a person may make a statement, one kalima, he doesn't give any thought to it. But because of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws this person into the hellfire. This is the power of the tongue. This is the power of the tongue, my dear brothers and sisters. And the sad reality today, my dear brothers and sisters, is what? Is that these sins of the tongue have become so widespread that they have unfortunately become second nature. It's now second nature for us to discuss the affairs of other people. It's now second nature for us to get involved in gossip. It's now second nature for us to lie. These sins have, have become so deep rooted within us that if somebody doesn't do it, we seem it's ajeeb. Why is this person not getting involved? Why is this person not giving their opinion? Yeah, how many times do we see, uh, regardless of the age, our elders will sit down and they'll talk about others. Youngsters will sit down and they'll talk about others. Aunties will sit down and they'll talk about others. SubhanAllah, all. And it's, it's, it's rampant and it's a, a big, big disaster, my dear brothers and sisters. And the, the, the sin that is probably most rampant when it comes to sins of the tongue is, of course, backbiting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this directly in the Quran. That do not backbite one another. Why? Would one of you like to eat the dead flesh of their brother? You would hate to do that. Just as you would hate to eat the flesh of your dead brother, yes, you wouldn't, nobody wants to do that. In the same way, you should hate the sin of backbiting. And what is backbiting, by the way? The Prophet والسلام, one day he asked the companions, he said, Atadruna Do you know what backbiting is? And they said, Allah and His Messenger know best. The Prophet والسلام, defined it. Listen to this definition. He said, He said, to mention something about your brother or your sister that they do not like. That's the definition of backbiting. Yes, that's the clear definition. Yes, you talk about uh, your brother in Islam, uh, the way they look, the way they dress, what's happened in their life, and they don't like it, this is backbiting. You've now backbitten that person. And that's a major calamity, that's a disaster. As I said, that we find many of us falling into. And ghiba is such a sin, my dear brothers and sisters, backbiting is such a sin, that really it creates enmity in the heart. If you find out that somebody's been speaking about you, how does that make you feel? Are you going to want to be cordial with that person? Are you going to want to be friends with that person? No. Why? Because they've been talking about you. They've been saying things about you that you don't like. So it, create, it creates division within communities and within society. Now, of course, there are certain times where it's permissible to mention something about your brother and sister. I remember I did a khutbah many years ago on backbiting, and uh, I didn't mention the permissible times. And somebody said to me, you know, so what? You're never allowed to say anything about somebody else, no matter what they've done. No, there are situations from the sunnah that we know it's permissible for you to say something about somebody that they won't like. Yeah, for example, you have a dispute, and you go to someone to, uh, to, to mediate. You're going to say things that maybe the other person won't like. Yes, about what's happened, etc. So in these situations, it's permissible. We also know uh, the famous um, uh, narration of when uh, Hind, yes, the wife of Abu Sufyan. So Hind uh, complained to the Prophet والسلام, that her husband was a stingy person. Yes. So she's saying, can I take from his wealth without him knowing? The sisters, they like this hadith. Yeah? <laughs> Yes. And the Prophet والسلام, he said, take what suffices you and your children. 
Meaning if he's not providing for you your basic necessity and needs, any you can take from his wealth. Yes, yeah, so the sisters, they maybe extend that. They say, khalas, tonight they're going home and getting the husband's bank card and ordering the shoes and the uh, handbags. No, no, this is not the meaning of the hadith. Brothers are going to be sleeping with the uh, wallet in the pocket today. No, no, the hadith is what? Is that if he's not, I mean, forget the going into that. The point is, is what? That she mentioned he's a stingy person. Now, would Abu Sufyan like that to be mentioned about him? No. So in certain circumstances, when you're going for a ruling, etc., you can't mention certain things. And that's just to, to make that clear and to put that out there, inshallah. Um, but one statement, and I'll, I'll come to the end, inshallah. One statement that if we live by, this is a statement of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, It will save us from much trouble. It will save us from much trouble in the dunya and the akhirah. And that's where the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then do what? Either speak good or keep silent. If we just practice that, we would be saved from so much trouble. Either speak good or keep silent. You don't have to comment on everything, my dear brothers and sisters. You know, we're living in a generation of TikTok, of Instagram. Yeah, where subhanAllah, everybody is commenting on everything. There are people talking about, uh, you know, family issues on TikTok and what's happened between a husband and a wife and this has happened and that's happened and everybody's got videos coming out on YouTube and then there's refutations and there's refutations of the refutations. It's just a mess. And everybody's having to, you don't have to comment, my dear brothers and sisters. You don't have to get involved in other people's lives. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Min husni Islam al -mar'i ma la yani. He said, from the excellence of a person's Islam is to leave that which doesn't concern you. If it doesn't concern you, you don't have to get involved. And we would again save ourselves from so much trouble if we didn't get involved in things which didn't concern us. And I'll end with this one hadith. And this one hadith really, my dear brothers and sisters, should cause us great concern if we are those who get involved in the affairs of others and we take from the rights of others. The Prophet ﷺ one day, he was with the companions and he asked them a question. He said, Atadruna man al muflis That do you know who the bankrupt one is? And the companions, they replied, they said the bankrupt one, yeah, thinking like we would think, and he's the one who's la dirham wa la mata'. He has no money and he has no possessions, no belongings. That's their understanding of the bankrupt one. And the Prophet ﷺ said, no. He said, the bankrupt one is the one from my ummah who comes yet to Yawm Al-Qiyamah, this salah, was siyam, was zakah. He comes on the day of judgment and he's got salah in his account. He's got siyam in his account. He's got zakah in his account. He's got all these great deeds in his account. But then the Prophet ﷺ said, what? He carried on the hadith. And he said, وَيَأْتِ قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَالَ هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا He said that, however, this same person who was praying the salah, he was fasting in Ramadan, he was giving the zakat, he was doing all these great deeds, what else was he doing? He was cursing others. He was slandering others. He was taking from the wealth of others. He was harming others. He was basically what? Causing mischief and causing harm to other people. And the Prophet ﷺ said that that person, yes, who has all of these good deeds, but he's harmed all those other people, what will happen to him on the Day of Judgment is that those people that he harmed, that person that you spoke about, that person that you slandered, that person whose wealth you took, they will come on the Day of Judgment and they will take from your good deeds. This is the bankrupt one. When you think you've done all of these good deeds and you think, yes, you know, I've got a big bank of good deeds there. No, all of those good deeds that you had, they're gone. One by one, they're being taken by all of those people that you've been harming. Yes, all of those people that you've been speaking against. Until what? He has no good deeds left. And if there's still people that need to take from his, their, their right from him, then what will happen? He will take their sins. That's the true bankrupt one, my dear brothers and sisters. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He protects us. And as I said, when it comes to the sins of the tongue, you see them rampant. And you could be in the holiest of nights. Maybe it's one of the nights of, could be Laylatul Qadr, in the masjid, and people are talking about others. May Allah protect us. May Allah forgive us for all of those things that maybe we've said about others in the past. May He allow us to protect our tongue. Protect our tongues. The Prophet said, Man yadman ni, ma bayna lihyehi wa ma bayna rijlihi, adman lahul jannah. He said, Whoever can guarantee me what's between, his two cheeks and what's between his legs, I guarantee him Jannah. If you can protect that, I guarantee you Jannah is the Prophet I'm saying. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He allows us to protect our uh, speech and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgives us for those things that we've said about others.